What's going on everyone? Today we're going to be talking about the Logitech MX Master 3S. So this mouse was released by Logitech roughly two and a half weeks ago. I've been using it since then and it's been a great productivity tool. Two things you can expect from this video or not expect. One, I will not talk about how it compares to its predecessor, the Logitech MX Master 3. The other thing we will not be covering is uh, the physical device as much. Instead, what I wanna do is briefly go over the buttons and then dive right into the software so you can see how the software is what makes this a productivity workhorse. Sounds good? Let's go. All right, let's quickly go over what the buttons are on this mouse. So here you have left click, right click, and the wheel. These are all pretty straightforward. There's this middle button right here that changes this wheel from going ratchet to smooth. So right now it's in smooth mode. If I click on it again, it becomes ratchet. And so here we also have a horizontal scroll. This one, the vertical scroll, actually has a push down uh, ability and you could actually customize that. We'll talk about that later. This does not. So this is purely for scrolling left or right. You also have two buttons here, button one, button two. And right here, I don't know if you notice it, but that is actually a button two. And so you could actually customize that button. And then on the other side, you have this right here. You press this button for either pairing or selecting what computer you want to use this with. I have it set up for one and two as personal and work. I've not used my third. You actually have a toggle here to turn the mouse on and off. And finally, you have USB-C to charge the mouse. So here is the new Logi Options Plus app. There's an old Logi Options app that could use uh, that you could use with devices like the M720, which is actually a good Logitech mouse. Uh, but it looks like the Logi Options Plus is for the MX Master Series. Let's go ahead and select our mouse, which is this white one that is 85% charged. So here on the left, you'll see the ability to update your buttons, point and scroll, easily switch between computers. Setup flow, which basically makes it so you can control two different computers seamlessly and settings. On the top right, you'll see that we have global settings. These are the things that will, all apps will actually use based on your customization options, unless you have some very specific apps set up here. So in all situations, the these these different options are going to be what's used with this mouse, unless I'm in Photoshop, in which case we have this, Final Cut Pro, in which case we have this, Zoom, in which case we have this. And so all these were set up by default. There are other applications I have on this computer that I could set up um, with customizations. So Logitech actually has some customizations for Google Chrome, Microsoft Word, and Safari. Uh, but I could set up things for, say, Adobe Lightroom if I wanted to. So let's close this for a second. Before I go into what my settings are, what I'd love to do is just click on one of these options and let you see all the different options you have. So in this scenario, remember, this thing can do a, a vertical scroll as well as a push down. I have it set for gestures but you could actually set it up to do all kinds of things. You can make it do what this button does. You could make it do mission control. You can make it show or hide your desktop. Uh, you could actually make it do keyboard shortcuts. So here I can actually make it do command C for copy if I wanted to, like an easy way to, to do copy. Or I can do many other things. Let's scroll down for a moment and look at these. So it's really neat how you can basically set up this button any way you want. Let's go back to gestures. They actually have other gestures beyond what I use it for. So Windows navigation, media controls, app nav navigation. So if you go media controls, I actually have this wired up to this button. So you can see how this works in a moment. Um, 
you can do that. You can switch applications. You could zoom or rotate, which is how I use it. You can pan. And again, you could actually make it so that holding down the button and going left, right, up, down, or just clicking actually does five different things. So let's actually see how I have it set up. I have it set up for Zoom, okay? Um, so if you actually look at this browser, so I'm scrolling down, I'm scrolling down, and I look and I'm like, oh, I really want to see what this keyboard looks like up close. I could just click and boom, I zoomed in. That's the smart zoom. If I hit it again, I zoom out. But maybe I want to zoom in a very specific amount. All I have to do is hold the button down and start going up and it'll actually go to where my mouse is and I can start going down. That whole time my finger was on the button again. Maybe I'm like, oh, let's go look at what this wheel looks like. I can click and zoom in, click and zoom out, or I can hold and zoom in and zoom out. So, oops, zoom in, zoom out. So that's how I'm using it. The other options I want to cover here is the horizontal scroll. So again, this can do many other things. Here's some other actions that you have. Navigate between apps, switch between desktops. You'll see that they lock this one down a little more because there's just some actions that just won't make sense with horizontal scroll. I like to keep horizontal scroll default. And so you can see how it is in action. So here I'm scrolling through this website, just doing this. So let's talk about zoom and scroll for a moment. Historically, to do everything I just showed you, I would need to do this. Well, to make it easy for myself. I would have a Magic Trackpad 2, and I would have this mouse, and I would be using this 98% of the time. There are some customization buttons here, but then when it came to zooming out and zooming in, or swiping, I would have to use a magic trackpad. There are two reasons why I wanted to get rid of this setup. One, I didn't want two different devices on my desk at all times. Two, I always bounce between two computers and having a magic trackpad connect to both computers is kind of a drag. You actually have to have it lightning cabled in using a dock so that when you dock the other laptop, it immediately responds to your, your feedback. Otherwise, if you have Bluetooth, it becomes very difficult to bounce between two different computers. So let's put these away for a moment and go back to this. Now, again, all I have to do is before I would, actually, let's bring this back. Before what I would do is I would go swipe, 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 swipe. Now I just do this. Before I would have to zoom in, and now I just do this. Oops, I guess they didn't have Zoom on that website. But now I do this. <laughs> to be fair, if I did it with this, it wouldn't have worked either. Uh, so that's how those two features work. Um, another thing I do day to day is I actually have to open up a lot of tabs. Currently, I'm hiring, so that really means... I'm in LinkedIn looking at many, many different profiles and I'm opening up each profile in a new tab. So what I would historically have to do is hold down the command button to open up a new link. But now I can actually do this. Open up, open up windows with this button and close them with this button, which is very simple. You just hit command W to close a window, right? But like everything I'm about to show you right now is being done with just a mouse only. So if I came here and I was like, oh, you know what? I actually want to buy a bunch of Logitech devices. By the way, this is not sponsored at all. This is just me using Logitech as an example. Like, okay, I want to see some mice and keyboards. I would just hit this button and boom, a new tab opened. I also want to look at streaming gear. Boom, another tab opened. Headsets, let's do it. So now I have all these tabs open and I can scroll down and I'm like, hmm, actually, you know what? Can't afford all this because... Uh, it's really expensive. So boom, I just close, I just close the tab hitting this button. Like how convenient is that? 
So, uh, you know what? Oh, these are nice. These are nice. I wish I had this mouse. Oh, look. Hey, let's just look at the, the different options you have here. Let's zoom in. Scroll down. This was not planned. This is perfect. Uh, this is the one I have right here. But there are two other colors. I believe these two colors uh, existed with the MX Master 3. This white one I have right here is new with the 3S series. And so let's zoom back out and close this window. And so that's it for these different buttons. You'll see if I click this one, many other options here, very much like the vertical scroll. If I click this button here, see I have this wired up to do click plus command and that's exactly why it's opening up new tabs. Look, you could do all kinds of other things. I can do close window here, but I could do many other things as well. The final button I wanna show you is this button. So you will not wanna use this button for normal day-to-day normal -day tasks. And the reason why is it's actually really hard to hit this, this button. So if you see my thumb, as I think most people, their thumbs will rest on this thing right here. And so if I'm like this and I wanna push this button and I go like this, essentially like drumming a beat, it doesn't actually hit the button. You have to move your thumb a little to the left and then press it down. And believe it or not, going down with your thumb like this is a very awkward move. It seems like it should be straightforward, but it's actually really, really uh, challenging. And so what I do have it set up to is to control my media. So let's go ahead and without using my, without using my keyboard, let's see if this will trigger Spotify. There you go. So I, I hit it and it started playing music. Actually, this track is great, but you know what's great? The next track too. Let's skip forward by pressing this down and holding this down and going right. That's the next one. Actually, let's run it back. So if I hold it down and go left, boom, we're back on the track that was there earlier. I could also do volume up and volume down. And again, just simply clicking will pause the music. So that's really, really cool. So again, Spotify is what was getting triggered because that was the last media app I used. Um, and if you had YouTube playing, it would do the same for YouTube. Let's quickly go over some of the predefined ones that Logitech did with some of these vendors. So if you go to Photoshop, they actually have some, like brush size. That's a new thing. So if I was on Photoshop, I could actually use this to determine brush size. I could do redo and undo. For Final Cut Pro, I could do a timeline horizontal scroll, which is really awesome. Uh, that'll save me a lot of time. I'm probably gonna change this from pan and hold to, um, let's see here, cut the clip. I cut a clip a lot in Final Cut Pro. So I think that actually suits my needs better. And then um, when, look, when you're using Final Cut Pro, you're doing a lot of undos and redos and they have that set up here. And for Zoom, I can actually hit this button right here to do mute, unmute. I could do this one to start and stop my video. And I could do this one for volume up and volume down, which is really, really neat. So I think that's pretty much it. That covers the button section. Let's quickly cover point and scroll. So point and scroll by default has the thumb wheels set to 50% each. What I've noticed for my own use is it was too slow. I've actually spiked these up to 100% all the way. And so here, uh, Smart Shift automatically switches a scroll wheel from line by line scrolling to hyper fast. So if you're actually reading a website and you're you're ratcheting up and down, it'll, it'll slowly go up and down. But if you go, it'll actually Smart Shift and scroll down really quickly for you. You can change the sensitivity if you want. The other thing new actually with this is uh, 8K DPI. I have that enabled, but I'm only pushing it to 2000 DPI. I, if I went to, let's just see what happens. If I went to 440, <laughs> I can't control it. I'm not a gamer. 4400 DPI, you'll see that I'm, I'm moving really quickly across the screen. I think the default was maybe a thousand. Um, yeah, and that's just simply too slow. And the reason why it feels slow is because I'm on a 4K monitor. So let's ramp this back up to, th to 2000. All right, there you go. And now easy switch. 
Again, I cover this very quickly. Not a lot to cover here. If you have three computers, you can set them up and quickly switch between them. Or you can use Flow. We will not go over that in, in this overview. But you could use this so that, let's say you have two laptops left and right, you can use one mouse. And if you have the X, MX Master Keyboard, you could use that as well to quickly jump between the different devices. Uh, that is it, okay? I covered a lot of software for, the, for, for this mouse. And hopefully you found it helpful. Again, what makes this mouse special is, you know, it's a great device. Honestly, it feels really good on the hands, but it's the software, the software powers this thing. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you wanna see more videos, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I will get back to you. I will leave a link to this product in the description as well as some of the other products you saw in this video. All right, till next time, peace.